everybody, it's Erin Reed from Erin Reed Makes, and I am going to challenge you to look outside the box for what you can use for crafty storage in your space. I came across something fun in my kitchen. How many of you guys have one of these, or the trio, because they came in a multitude of colors, that might be in your kitchen right now, and you're kind of humming and hawing, do I want to keep them, do I not? I think I've had these things for at least 15 to 16 years, maybe even more. I think they actually came as a wedding gift, but I have not used them in my kitchen. I literally found them in the bottom of a drawer. They stuck with us when we moved, but they didn't quite fit the size of sugar or flour or whatever, but I do still love the canisters. I mean, it's blue. Come on. It's blue. It's awesome. Looking at them going, that'd be some cool crafty storage if I just kind of rethink and I can decorate them. <gasps> That is what this video is all about, is how to take an item like this and look at it differently. I took it out of the kitchen and brought it into my crafty space as storage. I don't know if I'm gonna keep 100% of the little scoopers for this project, but I do know I wanna keep the scoopers for something else possibly down the line. Look outside the box, maybe even head to your local Goodwill or thrifty store, and you might find a batch of these or even at a garage sale, because they're, I can guarantee you, they're just about everywhere. I am taking some vinyl here, and I am taking a gorgeous die. I mean, look how gorgeous this die is. And I am going to die cut out the shape because we're going to etch these. These are porcelain, so why not use the porcelain to my benefit? the same thing on all of these designs or on all these things so basically what I'm doing is I'm popping out all the little sections I'm gonna speed that through for you real fast all right so obviously this entire stencil is not going to fit on top of here I want it to kind of fit just on this top lip so I'm going to come in and cut sections off I'm basically wanting to keep this inside so I'm going to cut from here all right, so what I have right here is I have etch mask. Basically, instead of trying to peel this off and get this to stick on here and be perfect, there is a better way of transferring this to this. And that's what etch mask is all about. So it's basically just a masking surface. It's a sticky surface. I'm gonna peel this off and I'm going to apply my mask or my stencil piece, my vinyl face down. Once I have it on the sticky side, I then need to pull off the backing because I want my vinyl to stick to that. So right now that's not going to happen. So I got to take off the sticker part. Okay, so I got a sticky vinyl. I'm going to come into my jar and place it exactly where I want it to. Cool thing is, is the vinyl is a lot more sticky than the actual jar or than the, the mask. So I just got to come in and make sure I get everything lined up where I want to. And now I can pull off the mask and leave behind the vinyl. So this would work if you're just doing vinyl, which we're gonna be doing later. We're gonna be doing some vinyl stuff on this later, but look how easy this is. Voila, look how pretty it is on there. And I can reuse this piece right here. I just need to put the sheet back on because that stuff will last a long, long time until it gets to the point where it's just not sticky any, anymore, but that takes a while. So. My job now is to come in and make sure that this is all stuck down, but good. And everything in here is really squished down. And I have to decide, do I want to add any other pieces? Because look at these pieces I cut out. I might save them for further down, or maybe I'll use this. Maybe I can take this piece and do a different design on the next ones. They're all just a tiny bit different. I can come in and line them up like this, which means when I add them, ooh, that would be cool. So when I add these to my mask, it will look like that. So it's just a fun kind of something different, a little bit different than the what I have on the other one. And now I don't have to cut another piece. So I got lots of options. I also have all these other fun shapes. So maybe I wanna take some of these other shapes, and line them up. So, you know, look at that. These are just kind of cool shapes that come out of this. Maybe I want to do, I don't know. So you, you can play with it. That's the cool thing is that you can have fun and you can play. And this stuff is maneuverable enough that you can kind of mess around with that. So you'll see what other shapes I come up with or I might end up cutting some more of these. So I want to make sure this is all set and down. But when I add my etching cream, I only want to etch this top section. I don't want to etch the entire jar. So I got a little bit of a buffer. You can use this, creates kind of a dam, or I can add some more etching vinyl or some vinyl resist basically. So I can come in with my vinyl and I can create a little bit more of a barrier. 
So that's what I'm going to do now. So I'm just going to speed up the part where I'm going to be adding more of a barrier, more of a resist. And heads up, when you're working with something, because these are really, really old, I actually went through and I cleaned them really, really well to make sure, just to kind of see, see where I'm going here, just coming in, going around the circle to make sure I'm only etching where I want to etch, just like that. So it's going to take some, to get a circle, and these are straight lines, to get around a circle, I'm going to have lots of little sections. So this is where having some of this extra vinyl is super handy. I made sure that these jars were nice and clean. You want the etching solution to really stick down. So any oils and things are going to not make this work as well. So a little bit of alcohol, a little bit of a Clorox wipe, something like that. Ooh, you guys get the idea. I'm creating a barrier. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come in and we are going to etch this. All right, next step is now to etch. So I have my etching cream from Etch All, and I'm just going to open up the container. You can get a wide variety of different colors. It can get a little dark. It's still the same, and the cool thing is that it is reusable. I have had this jar for now like two years, and I just keep reusing the same stuff over and over. There's going to be a tiny bit of loss as there's a little bit that does not quite translate. And this is why I created that barrier, because everywhere my etching cream is touching, it is now going to etch. And you want to be generous. And don't worry about putting too much, because you're just going to be putting it right back into the container when it is done. So I am just going to make sure that this gets everywhere that I want it to etch. Know where I don't. Again, be generous. It's totally cool. And then it needs to sit for 15 minutes. Now, what if you let it sit for a little bit longer and you step away? totally fine don't worry about it it is obviously okay now it just needs to sit and set and wait for 15 minutes and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to scrape it off i'm going to speed through all that part for you scrape it off put it back in the jar and then i'm going to go wash this off in my sink and i have a stainless steel sink so it's not going to bother that do not take off any of the vinyl until after everything is cleared and that's where i'm going to come back with you guys is after it's been cleaned washed and then we'll remove the vinyl together Okay, so I've cleaned it, I've washed it, I've left this on, and now I'm gonna take this Broadline Deco Gold Liquid Gold Paint, oh, Paint Paint Marker. That was a big mouthful, wasn't it? It's from Marvi Yakuda, and it's a paint marker that can draw fine li or lines, and it's gold. First, I gotta get this thing activated. So, since I have my handy dandy paper towel, it's one of those ones that you have to activate. So, I'm gonna activate the pen, and I've left on the vinyl because what it's going to do is now that I've given my ceramic a tooth it's no longer shiny like you see down here it's got more of a dull finish you're going to notice a little bit more once I pull this up it's going to allow this paint marker to stick to it without wiping off all right so now I've got this activated and I'm going to come in and add some detail so right in here and again my vinyl is acting a little bit like my resist I'm going to paint in on some of the sections. This is a very, very fast dry. So I'm just going to add some really cool detail. Okay, so now it's time for the big reveal. Uh, the paint says it takes about 60 seconds to dry. We should be good to go. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to start peeling off a lot of my vinyl here. And look how cool that looks isn't that awesome so everywhere the marker is and I'm just gonna do a light touch yeah look it's dry it is fully dry it's not coming off so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna kind of buff right along these edges I don't want to buff too hard but kind of clean up a little bit where I can it's still got to set a little bit but I might come in with a q-tip actually and a little bit of water and just clean so part of this is not etched so it still has its beautiful shine of not being um, of the porcelain and that's the part that you're seeing in the part that I etched I use the marker for so that is stage one next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do some other variations on the tops of these jars getting some more fun decor on them but keeping the same scenario I might change up the patterns and stuff but you get the idea so that is next on the tops of these and I'll come back and I'll show you what they look like
All right, so I finished doing the etching and the color on the top of the jars and just take a look. They look so cool. I love it. I love how you can see some of the different kinds of etching that is on there. And then also with that gold pen that is just so pretty. All right, the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to add some decor to the sides of the jars. So I'm starting with the largest jar. And what I did is I went ahead and die cut out some of that vinyl from Style Tech Craft and with the same die that we were using. And I'm using silver for the side just for fun. So I finished doing my other jars and look at them. I love just kind of like how the shapes, I pulled some of the extra shapes that were from the cutouts. And so the edges of this are just really kind of bugging me. So I'm taking my X-Acto knife here, or just a, a blade, I'm cutting in and I'm cutting it. So I'm just taking off that extra rim and it cuts pretty darn clean. So, I'm just... so there, that's so much better. I mean, just take a look at that. I've just added some extra texture and it really did pop out. I mean, I could even remove some of these if I wanted to not keep it so linear looking, but I'm, I'm really actually quite liking that. It's so fun. So there they are, completed jars, edge top with the pen and then the extra vinyl on the sides. And I love the silver with the gold and then the hint of that blue. It is just so cool. Supply link's going to be all down below where you can find all the items I used for the, except for the jars that you have to kind of hunt for yourself, but think outside the box of what you can use for some crafty storage and also just to do some altered art on, just to decorate something that's a little bit different, a little bit of a different shape rather than just going for paper or a canvas. It's just, it's a little bit more fun, I think. And don't forget, please subscribe and hit that bell button. I'll see you guys again later. Bye-bye, everybody.